Cisco SecureX Automation Orchestration Forensic Snapshot with Host Isolation. Okay, this builds on that initial workflow that we did with Forensic Snapshot, but includes host isolation. So again, we've got our observable types, IP address, host name, AMP GUID, right? We need an AMP get connector GUID, right? So we wanna make sure um, we have our um, connection into AMP for endpoints as well as Orbital, right? Orbital will do the forensic snapshot. AMP for endpoints is gonna do the isolation. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and look at our access or account keys, right? So our access into these applications. We need the Orbital credentials. We've seen this before, but I'll show you again. We go into Orbital, we go into settings, We'll go ahead and create an API credential here and go ahead and hit create and we're gonna copy the username and password over, okay? Then we're gonna go into AMP credentials. And now we're gonna pivot into endpoint AMP and we're gonna to go to accounts, API credentials, and we're gonna create uh, API access specifically for um, the use case of uh, integration with endpoint AMP. And so we'll give it a name, we'll give it the, the scope that's required uh, and go ahead and hit create. Okay, so now we've got the credentials, we'll copy them over, but before then, uh, let's just go to jobs here so I can get this ready for when we start seeing the forensic side of it. Okay, so we paste that in, we go ahead and submit and we're good to go, right? There's nothing more that we need to do to get this workflow working, that's, that's it. So we'll go ahead and we'll run this workflow. So again, it could be a IP address or a host name or an AMP GUID. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the AMP GUID um, observable type and we'll paste it in. And then we'll go and let's grab an endpoint. Now I'm gonna grab a different endpoint than the one I used in the previous video. So we'll go ahead and um, select that asset here. There it is. We'll go ahead and copy the GUID. Now remember, right, the, the whole goal around SecureX, sure, you can run this from here and it'll, it'll take the forensic snapshot and do host isolation, but you can also have triggers, right? Um, as well and, and built into it. So, uh, you know, as, as the, the platform continues to mature, you'll see things like email trigger, right? You'll get an alert through email uh, and it could trigger this entire workflow um, itself. So what we see here is we passed the initial portion of it. It's now doing an orbital um, forensic scan. Let's check that out real quick. And we can see that it's active, right? So now it's taking that forensic snapshot of the endpoint and what we'll do is, it's completed here, let's just jump right in um, and have a quick peek at some of the data. Now I've done this before, but I'm just gonna show it again, just in case you started with this video as opposed to the other one. So you can see there's lots of elements here, and this is SHA-256 hash with running process. You can see the green is highlighted, means it's benign. Red obviously is bad. You got map drives, we've got processes, uh, logged in users, we got, uh, let's see, Windows executables that are automatically uh, execute. We've got uh, registry, network registry keys that might be involved, processes with network connections. Again, we can pivot from here as well uh, if we wanted to, and we can uh, investigate that IP address and go into Cisco Threat Response. We could block it as an example. Again, here we're looking at loaded modules with hashes. We got processes, scheduled tasks, and the list goes on, right? So forensically, we've got a tremendous amount of data. Then we move into isolate. We can see it was green, and we can see that that endpoint automatically is now isolating. We just jumped into endpoint amp to show that, and now we can see it's isolated. It kind of gives us an idea. And there's a, an unlock code here as well. So if you needed to unlock that endpoint, you can certainly communicate that to the end user uh, as an example. Here I'm going to stop isolation. I'm going to give it a comment, threat mitigated, maybe tie in that change uh, request or change ticket or IR ticket. Uh, I, I'll put it here and I'll go ahead and stop the isolation. 
So pretty easy, right? Multiple tasks, all fully automated with Cisco SecureX. But before we finish off here, let's go ahead and jump to events. We can do that from here, or we can actually go down to the endpoint here and click events, right? You can see we can st start isolation. We can do a scan, diagnostics, take a forensic snapshot. But we can jump into events. Very quickly, we can see, you know, isolated started, and these will slowly get updated as well, right, um, in, in regards to all the things that are happening on the endpoint. So pretty easy stuff. A um, couple of API keys that you need to get over to SecureX, and you've got this automated workflow built right in.